What's shaking, babes? Postmill is rounding off the New Year event with one final pickup. Everyone must love these, right? Given how often they release them. Let's see January off with a bang with the Demon's Transient Summon. Suzuka. The strongest 4 star in the game. If you ask a certain blog poster, anyways. Suzuka's damage isn't stopping any shows though, due to its unreliability and move dependence, and the range and rates of her effects lack ambition. In early Osmo, reliable one turn farming hadn't existed yet, and we players had to rely on shakier rates for moderate impact. Suzuka fits that design to a T, with the best value she brings being her low rate damage denial. This design has fallen out of fashion, as today we have multiple units who deal more damage and have more utility, at a far greater range and reliability. Her kit is a complete skeleton, fitting for the skinny legend she is. This termite brought us the worst recurring mechanic in the game. Buff dependent team charge fill. As many of you know, Kasuga had the selfish version of this building his own charge every time he received a buff. Kagutsuchi was the first to democratize the effect to fill his ally's charge instead. To name a few problems with this mechanic, buffs already held won't trigger this effect, the rate of effect isn't guaranteeable, and the timing makes it difficult to get charges up consecutively. Across the years, this paradigm has spread like a cancer, most recently with Amano Jaku. Newsflash! Out of everyone who did it, no one was particularly remarkable, and the best of the bunch is still Kasuga and possibly Masashi, neither of whom are also exceptional. Life Runners, stop trying to make buff dependent charge fill happen, it's not going to happen. Someone calls CPS because this teenage father is neglecting his duties. He's got a smorgasbord of defensive and sacrificial effects, and the piece de resistance of this is a guaranteeable rare defense amp to allies. He'd make for a solid defensive unit, if not for how most of his utility isn't refreshable within a phase. This ultimately means that he won't have the stamina to survive the longer battles where most other tanks would, and would be better off brought to battles of an awkward medium length. I'm guessing he won't survive the long and arduous battle with Takamaru for our child custody either. Lightning round! Quite a surprise! Life Wonders is treating us with a bunch of long forgotten commemorative ARs. But how memorable are they exactly? Three, two, one, start! That sinking feeling. Wanna hear my chapter 10 backstory again? See me in the office. C -c -c Clear! Those certainly were the equipment of all time. Now, let's finish off the other half of the demon's pickup. Shooter! Shooter? More like, shoot directly in the garbage bin. In short, he starts with a personal damage amp, damage mitt, and charge fill, and can share that boost and advantage state to his team if he moves. A plain increase in advantage state is... fine. But his potential as a damage dealer is stifled by his range, and his team tanking is butchered by its first turn restriction. He's in no way ready to take the bat farming, better suited for bunting back in challenges. And the crowd goes mild! It's alright, Shooten. You still get plenty of praise for that sick bat of yours. Cruise it! That can't be it. Where's the rest of it? You're an enigma throughout your kit, Krusnik. In exchange for some okay healing, you refuse all defense amps. In exchange for okay damage, you require movement and a specific amount of health while suffering a weaker first hit. In exchange for bestowing a number of fascinating skills to allies, those skills can't be exploited very well due to their uncertainty and trigger timing. It's as if you were designed to always lack in every aspect. For example, you seem to be lacking double hit bestowal to allies, since your kit otherwise would seem well designed towards that. Oh, Krizenik, like the hot vampire you are, you've got nothing to do but suck. So keep sucking, baby. Just like that. Who says chivalry is dead? Oniwaka is the white knight of the game, valiantly jumping in front of his man to defend him. He's already depicted his enemies as Soyjax and himself as the Chad, making sure he's defending himself well too. Okay, defense is nice, but that alone won't win battles, let alone clear them decisively. Hoarding all the moves greatly limits your options for other team members to carry the rest of the battle, especially since only one would benefit from his white knighting. Modern tanks have other utilities going for them, and Oniwaka is no exception with an amp and double hit. 
Though these are situational at best, and incredibly trivial at worst. If today's quests were more defense-oriented, maybe you'd find some relevance. That's not the case though. It's alright, Oniwaka. You can't serve me in public anymore, but you'll make do in private. Booga booga! Hopefully this will be the last pickup jump scare in a while. I don't know about you, Gems, but I'm more than ready for some actual new content. Unlike the recent past banners, the decision is clear with this one. Give it a large burst and avoid at all costs. The highlights are dim and the lowlights are pitch black. That's all for now, cuties. Catch you next time.